our entire rising, rising, chapter 23. The next morning, Rob put the keys to the tiger cage in one pocket and the wooden bird in the other and set out looking for Willie May. He found her in the laundry room, sitting on one of the fold-up chairs, smoking a cigarette and staring into space. Hey there, she said to him. Where's your lady friend at? School, said Rob, but today's only a half day. He kept his hands in his pockets. Now that he stood before Willie May, he was afraid to give her the bird. What if it was wrong? What if he had carved it wrong and it didn't look anything like the real cricket? What you giving me that shifty-eyed looks for? Willie May asked. I made you something, Rob said quickly before he lost his nerve. Made me something, said Willie May. For real? Uh-huh. Close your eyes and hold out your hand. I ain't, said Willie May. But she smiled and closed her eyes, and she put out her enormous hand, palm up, and Rob carefully placed the bird in it. You can look now, he told her. She closed her fingers around the little piece of wood, but she didn't open her eyes. She puffed on her cigarette. The long gray ash on the end of it trembled. Don't need to look, finally, she said. The cigarette ash dropped to the floor. I know what I got in my hand. It's cricket. But you got to look at it and tell me, did I do it right, said Rob. I ain't got to do nothing, said Willie May, except stay black and die. She opened her eyes slowly, as if she was afraid she might frighten the bird into flying away. This is the right bird, she said, nodding her head. This is the one. Now you don't got to dream about him no more, said Rob. That's right, said Willie May. Where'd you learn to work a piece of wood like this? My mama, said Rob. Willie May nodded. She taught you good. Yes, ma'am, said Rob. He stared down at his legs. I know a wooden bird ain't the same as having a real one. It ain't, agreed Willie May, but it soothes my heart just the same. My dad said he ain't got no jobs for me until this afternoon. He said I could help you out this morning. Well, said Willie May. She dropped the bird into the front pocket of her dress. I might could find some work for you to help me. So Rob spent his morning following Willie May from room to room, stripping the dirty sheets from the beds. And while he worked, the keys jingled in his pocket. And he knew that soon Sistine would be out of school and she would demand again that he unlock the cage and let the tiger go. Chapter 24. Where's the prophetess? Sistine asked him as soon as she stepped off the bus. She was wearing a bright orange dress with pink circles all over it. Her left knee was skinned and bleeding, and her right eye was swollen. Huh? said Rob. He stood and stared at her and wondered how she could get in so many fights in only half a day of school. Willie May, said Sistine. Where is she? She's vacuuming, said Rob. Sistine started walking purposefully toward the Kentucky Star. She started to talk to Rob without even looking back. My mother found out I was wearing your clothes to school, she said. She took them away from me. I'm in trouble. I'm not supposed to come out here anymore. You know, said Rob, you don't always got to get in fights. Sometimes if you don't hit them back, they leave you alone. She whirled around and faced him. I want to get in fights, she said fiercely. I want to hit them back. Sometimes I hit them first. Oh, said Rob. Sistine turned back around. I'm going to find the prophetess, she said loudly. I'm going to ask her what we should do about the tiger. You can't ask her about the tiger, said Rob. Bosheb Bosheb said I ain't supposed to tell nobody, especially not Willie May. Sistine didn't answer him. She started to run, and Rob, to keep up with her, ran too. They found Willie May vacuuming the shag carpet in room 203. Sistine went up behind her and tapped her on the back. Willie May whirled around with her fist clenched like a boxer. We need some answers, Sistine shouted over the roar of the vacuum cleaner. Willie May bent down and turned the vacuum cleaner off. Well, she said, look who's here. She kept her hand balled up as if she was still searching for something to hit. What's in your hand, Sistine asked. Willie May uncurled her fist and showed Sistine the bird. Oh, said Sistine. And Rob realized then why he liked Sistine so much. He liked her because when she saw something beautiful, the sound of her voice changed. All the words she uttered had a oof sound to them, as if she was getting punched in the stomach. The sound was in her voice when she talked about the Sistine Chapel, and when she looked at things he carved in wood, and it was there when she said the poem about the tiger burning bright, and it was there when she talked about Willie May being a prophetess. Her words sounded the way all those things made him feel, 
as if the world, the real world, had been punched through so that he could see something wonderful and dazzling on the other side of it. Did Rob make it? Sistine asked Willie May. He did, said Willie May. It looks alive. Is it like your bird that you let go? Just about exactly, said Willie May. I, said Sistine. She looked at Willie May. Then she turned and looked at Rob. We, she said, we need to ask you something. Ask on, said Willie May. If you knew about something that was locked up in a cage, something big and beautiful that was locked away unfairly for no good reason, and you had the keys to the cage, would you let it go? Willie May sat down on the bed. A cloud of dust rose up around her. Lord, Lord, she said, what you two children got in a cage. It's a tiger, Rob said. He felt like he had to be the one to say it. He was the one who found the tiger. He was the one who had the keys to the cage. A what? said Willie May. A tiger, said Sistine. Do Lord, exclaimed Willie May. It's true, said Sistine. Willie May shook her head. She looked up at the ceiling. Oh, she let out a breath in a low, slow hiss of disapproval. All right, she said. Why don't you all show me where you got this tiger locked up in a cage?